from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now here's your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is a Cube conversation from our Boston area studios. The ecosystem around data and analytics definitely isn't becoming any simpler today. Joining me for this segment is Drew Clark, who's the Chief Strategy Officer at Click. And Drew, uh, you know, let, let, let's start there. We, we talk about, uh, you know, the, the wave of big data. A lot of them have, you know, wrapped themselves around the cloak of AI today. Uh, you know, you've got machine learning in there. Um, so, so help kind of give us a, a little bit about, you know, where Click fits into that ecosystem and differentiates itself from uh, the, this very diverse ecosystem. Yeah, sure, and I get that question a lot, Stu, is who is Click and what makes us unique? And as a strategy uh, individual and professional, I spend a lot of time talking, working with uh, customers, other looking at companies, and I always come back to, it's like, what is that core kind of part? You know, every company comes from something. And you know, and then how does it fit into the landscape? So I use actually our history to explain a little bit about who we are. So we're 25 years ago, um, or 25 years old, and our very first customer was Tetra Pak, which make cardboard boxes of all different sizes. So you think about Amazon when you order something and you get it showed up at your, it shows up at your des uh, desktop or your door. It's in a different size box. Well, Tetra Pak had a problem of their salespeople were selling inventory they didn't have. But, you know, and they needed to be able to sell what they had, but they also wanted to make sure they showed what they did not have. So they signed on and, you know, had a project with Click, and this was in Sweden, and they developed a product, which was really a product configurator tied with a visualization to it. So what they had to answer on a business question was, tell me what products are and are not available and to be able to dynamically make selections as you know, sales rep is answering the questions. So that was the genesis of our own kind of product. So we had a choice back then to say, do we stay in a product configurator space or do we kind of move into the visualization kind of analytics? And so we took that unique kind of package, what we call the associative engine, with the visual kind of piece, and we went and started on the, our, the business intelligence or the analytics journey. And where we've kind of evolved that as a company is we took that, and you know, great examples, another customer a couple of years ago, uh, there was the uh, tsunami in Japan. Remember that, Sue? Of course. You know when that happened? So one of our customers was uh, in a uh, consumer products and they had a lot of supply or ingredients that came out of Japan. And you know they also knew that, okay, the tsunami hit, big impact on their supply chain, and they had to actually make an announcement, they had earnings on Wall Street and they were like needed to be able to outline to their investors within the week to say, well, is this a big impact? Is this not a big impact on you know our our forward-looking kind of revenues? And they tried answering a question on a using traditional analytics. You know, it's show me what products were impacted by the tsunami, and that's a first-order question. As, as you know, it's kind of well, it's an easy question to ask. Well, now you're going down into the ingredients, you're looking at where the data is in the supply chain, and you come back with an answer that says these are the ones that are impacted. The next question that the business asked was, okay, tell me what products were not affected. And now think about that is not question going through every single row. Oh, and tell me what the inventory is and can we run campaigns and sales where we know we're either A, going to miss our revenue numbers or, or we're going to hit them. And they used the click, they tried a different kind of traditional way of answering a question. They couldn't answer it because they get stuck at that first it was Click that actually answered and helped them answer the second question, show what products were not in, affected and do we have inventory, and they were able to make the decision. And so that's where we start. What we makes us unique is this combination of analytics and visual kind of interface. And you know that's been kind of our core differentiator in the market from 25 years ago to where we are today. Yeah, and, and boy, that, that, that industry has, has changed 
quite a lot. Uh, you know, I think about uh, you know data visualization. Uh, we used to do infographics, you know, mm -hmm. many years ago. Just how do I tell a story with that data? You know, there's the creative things you can do with it, but as well as you know, us as humans, uh, you know, we we look at all of those data points out there. Um, and most of the time it's not static. Uh, you know, I love people when they're sharing. It's like, okay, let me give you, you know, charts for something over a hundred year period and you can watch it ebb and flow and change uh, and the like. So, you know, there's so many technology. You know, 25 years ago, uh, you know, cloud had many different terms. You know, I, I, I can argue I've worked with plenty of people that we, mm. you know, had the XSPs back in the 90s and, you know, the pre-cloud things, but there's some challenges we've been trying to solve um, and then some major breakthroughs we've had uh, you know, with, with some of these journeys and these technology waves. So, you know, bring us up to today as to, uh, you know, you know, we talk about things like, you know, speed and scale and agility um, impacting what we're doing. It's, it's got to be, the, you've got the why and the core, um, but the, the how and the what uh, has changed dramatically. Stu, you really are kind of a technical kind of guy at heart, right? So one of the things that you said at the beginning there where you talked about looking at an infographic and the yeah. human kind of component of how do you look at this information and how do you understand it? It's getting bigger and harder to understand. And uh, one of the things that we firmly believe in is the human being is an integral part of the decision-making process. And so you think about a scatter plot with 30,000 data points, yep. how do you actually make sense of it. And we spent a lot of time about the human brain and how it looks at information on this kind of big data scale. And, uh, and, and we're a predator. You know, as a human, we're you know binocular, and we look for certain things. And so, we spent a lot of time around that kind of visual interface. And I think um, uh, Stephen Few writes about this. Edward Tufte, you know, and his documentation around kind of how do you present information in a great way? Well, you take that thirty thousand kind of uh, data points on a scatter plot, and well, bringing it forward in our technology, we show density in heat because that's what we look for, and we look for patterns, and we look for outliers as a predator or as kind of an individual. And so we present the information in a way that a human is kind of wired to receive it, but underneath, and this is where I think your second part was going, underneath is like, how do you keep that elegance and, but responding to kind of now compute and infrastructure and all the sides. Yeah, and I guess I always worried is, uh, you know, we, we talk about, you know, garbage in, garbage out sometimes. How yeah. do I make sure I've got good data? How do I make sure, um, you know, the, the algorithms learning, uh, you know, uh, that there, there was a tool that was, uh, you know, oh, um, let me train this AI on Twitter, and what they got back, they had to turn it off really quick because it, uh, it uh, you know, became a troll and then much worse, and the language was, was awful. So, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes if you just let the data you know, run wild, uh, the, the algorithm the doesn't understand uh, what, what's going on. How, how do you balance that, make sure we're, we're getting, you know, good decisions and, uh, you know, good, good information and, you know, uh, we say, you know, if you automate a bad process, you know, you haven't done a good thing. <laughs> right, so. right. Well, and that comes through, I think, a number of layers of, from automation, there's kind of the data, getting it from the raw source, getting it ready for the analytical kind of consumption, and is it a machine, is it a human, is it a human augmented with kind of the intelligence, and as you progress through this kind of data kind of journey of uh, bringing the data into, now the common terms are data lakes and data swamps, uh, and well, wh how do you find the right information and where do you put the right kind of governance? And governance not being a bad word, but governance being a I'm confident that information is correct. And so, you know, you see the introduction of data catalogs. So much like a card catalog in a library, if you're old enough to actually uh, remember that. I know the Dewey so, Decimal System. Okay, there you go. So I'm old, I was a page. I was my first paying job was to put books back in the library. And, you know, you want to be able to find the right information and then know that it's been curated, been set up, but it doesn't have to be written all out. You want to have that progressive kind of, um, you know, uh, dis bringing of that information for the user to be able to do that. And as you kind of fan out from the central, that raw data out to kind of where the analytics users are kind of engaging and working with it, that governance allows for that confidence, but then you need to know that you're scaling and the speed, you don't want to wait uh, you know, if you had a request, you know, uh, the decision like, oh, just even what happened to that customer, a tsunami happened, 
I have earnings on a set day in days from an event. I can't wait a month to come up with the answer. I need that speed, I need that faster. All right, so who's the one that inside the customer that, that, that uh, you know, works on this? You know, we, we've all heard that, you know, there's skill gaps out there, um, you know, Years ago, it was like, okay, we're going to build this giant army of data scientists. Mm. And, um, you know, it's not like we're saying we don't need data scientists, but you know, we, we don't have enough time to train enough PhDs um, to fill the job. So, is that you know, where are we today? You know, what, 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 where do the customers fit organizationally? And you know, if you can get in a little bit to the kind of where the product touches them. Sure. You know? um, so, what you bring up is the. Uh, like a great interviewer, broad question, so many different ways we can go with this. And I come back to the idea of, kind of the, what a lot of people come and talk about is the citizen data scientist, but it's really about data literacy. And you know, these are individuals who need to be comfortable working with data and how do you actually have that kind of confidence level of when I'm looking at it, do I know is it real? Am I you know, having the right kind of conversation? Uh, just uh, recently I had the opportunity to see a number of presentations by college seniors who were kind of presenting their senior thesis on how they're kind of working with, uh, or on a particular theme. And I was in this behavioral sciences and leadership kind of uh, department is at the uh, United States Military Academy at West Point. And, you know, and when you think about leadership and you think about behavioral sciences, and you think about a lot of the softer side of it, but every one of these cadets had data and you can see them looking at the empirical data, looking at the R coefficients, is this noise, is this signal, what's causation versus correlation. What you see is this language of kind of data literacy in the, the curriculum and you flash forward and you go look at uh, every department in a company and you see people who are coming in who understand that, oh, there's data that can be used to be informing my decision. So I don't need to wait for this white lab coat um, PhD on data science, but you know, it's like, well, you know, is there causation? Is there correlation? So marketing, finance, sales, we're seeing this at that data citizen kind of at the edges in a company. And it's coming out of the universities. Yeah, no, I, I was at a conference recently and uh, you know, the analyst up on the keynote stage says, uh, you want to teach your, your, your team machine learning? Get a summer intern that's taken the courses and have them spend a week training you up on it. So, excellent. So, sounds like, uh, you know, if somebody wants to get started with Click, uh, relatively low bar, I don't have to go through some six month training class uh, to, to be able to start, uh, you know, getting some business value and in, uh, in rolling this out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Stu, you can go right on our website and you can sign up, start to use our uh, product right in the cloud. If you want to put it on a desktop, you can do that. And when you, you just drag in your first kind of data files, uh, and I encourage you to actually bring in a complicated kind of data set. Don't go with a simple Excel file. You know, a lot of companies can do bars, charts, and graphs. Uh, what, what you really want to do is bring in two different data sets and you kind of bring it into, and remember the associative engine of bringing different data together, and it's the second and the third question that you really are looking for those insights. And so you can very quickly assemble the information. Uh, you don't need to go back and learn what a left outer join is because our engine takes care of that for you. You want to understand what's going on, it's transparent, and then uh, you start finding insights within kind of minutes of being able to use that. Yeah, uh, well, if you go back to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, sometimes the answer is easy, I have to know the right questions yes. to be able to ask. All right, uh, Drew, want to give you the uh, final takeaway uh, for, for, for this piece. Okay, so if you're thinking about uh, dealing with any data, and you want to kind of answer not just the question, but it's usually the second and the third, and you want to have a speed of use. Uh, you can do that with uh, our platform, but think about it really in that concept of kind of data literacy. And you know, you want that right information for the individuals to read and write. Uh, that's okay, and it's easy. It's analyzing and arguing, and that's where the competitive advantage. So you know, take a look at that. Drew Clark, really appreciate the updates on, on Click, and uh, be sure to check out thecube.net. Uh, There's a nice little search bar on top. You can search by company, search by person. Actually, a lot of the key metadata you can search for in there. Thousands of videos in there. Never a registration or uh, to be able to get it. So I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks as always for watching the Cube.